Good evening, everybody, and once again, welcome to the video. This is part number two uh, for uh, getting started with Apache Hudi. This is a hands-on lab. So in the first part, I essentially introduce you what is a, what is Apache Hudi, right? And why is it so trending, right? So this part, we are going to actually write some glue script on AWS to uh, essentially create an Apache Hudi table, insert, uh, append items into that and stuff like that. So let's get started. This is a practical video, hands-on lab. Again, I do have to clean up the code. I will do that shortly, but um, uh, hopefully you get the concept, okay? So let me share my screen. So we went over, you know, all these uh, theory part, what is Apache Udi, what are some of the features, et cetera, et cetera. All right, a special, time, th a special thanks to Gabriel because I got some of the source code from his uh, GitHub repository and hence, um, I was able to get this working. Um, but again, I made my own version using serverless framework uh, for deployment, okay? So let's get started. Okay, so hopefully you guys should be see seeing my screen. Uh, if you observe here in my directory, I have a Python file called gluescript.py, which is where I'll write my Python code. An env file, which will essentially host all the env. Uh, jar uh, folder essentially has a jar file for um, Apache Hodi, these are important, please note that. Uh, and then YML file is where I wrote my infrastructure code, okay? So now let me show you, yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so the first over here, service, we are defining a service such as Apache Hodi, we are saying .env is true. Uh, we are using provider as AWS and region as US East one, and these are tags because tags essentially allows you to monitor the cost better. I'm using a plugin called serverless glue, which allows me to make my life a little easier, right? Over here, I'm gonna say the deployment bucket, which means the glue script has to be deployed in a bucket, right? So essentially, that's gonna be my deployment bucket. That's gonna be my temp directory bucket, right? Here, I'm giving my job name. Uh, if, if I show you the ENV quickly. This is the deployment bucket, right? Glue, learn, beginners, we have been doing this, right? Um, then here is the script path. Again, the, fi the file name locally, that, that is here, right? Type as Spark, I'm using Glue 3.0 version. Here I'm providing the on, maximum three workers. And here is where I'm defining all my arguments. Observe, I'm enabling job bookmarks. And here I'm essentially giving the jar files. And hence I said I have to clean up a code a little bit. Uh, this is the path to the S3 where my jar, jar file is. And again, I am providing a comma separated uh, value. Observe this carefully, okay? Uh, then over here, I have a custom argument. Over here, I'm saying enable bookmark. And here, I'm defining a variable called base S3 path. Uh, and I am using S3A glue. And then here is my bucket name, right? Table name is going to be user, which means Apache hoodie will create a new table called user. And here I'm using a library called uh, Faker. Uh, I'm gonna install the library um, you know, uh, on the cloud. Worker type is standard, that is G1X, uh, that is 16 GB of RAM. Uh, maximum three workers, timeout, retry zero. And here you can see in the support files, here I'm providing my glue script. So observe this carefully. Glue script.py, right? Then I'm saying, uh, I'm providing the bucket, right? And then essentially the prefix. So I want my script inside a folder called scripts. Here you can see that's the prefix. And execute upload, uh, execute upload true, which means deploy this file on S3. Similarly, I did for the jar files as well. Uh, basically here, if you observe, this is the local path where in, on my computer where the jar files are. And again, the, the jar file will go inside a folder called jar on S3. So here you can see that that is over here. And then again, uh, execute upload as true. So this is basically the infrastructure code, okay? Now coming to the glue job, this is where all the magic happens. And again, as I said, special thanks to this guy because I, uh, I was able to take some of the code from his repository here. Okay, so over here, uh, here these are just the imports, so nothing um, you know crazy here. Uh, pretty easy, self-explanatory here, right? Um, here I'm loading a two variables. Uh, again, these are the variables that I am providing as an argument in a glue. So observe your over here, right? This is the variable and this is the variable. So I want to use that variable in the glue script and essentially I'm uh, loading it on 26 and 27. Uh, here I'm just creating the target path. This is basically uh, where my table will be stored, right? The data for the table, right? So basically pretty self-explanatory. 
I have a simple uh, class called data generator, which returns some fake data. Uh, so all it does is just has to return some fake data. Here, this function will return me a Spark instance, right? So it's gonna return a Spark. Here, uh, I create a Spark instance, right? And then here you can see I'm getting the data. Again, the data is list of tuples. These are the columns. And then what I do is basically I'm creating a Spark data frame. So here, this creates a Spark data frame on line number 90, where you see my mouse is highlighted. Here are the options for hoodie. These are uh, predefined options. I haven't changed it, uh, whatever the author had. So these are all the options for the hoodie table. Uh, here is how you would write uh, data to uh, S3, um, essentially your you know, data into hoodie format. <laughs> so you're gonna say, this is DF is a Spark data frame. I'm using a write, and then I'm using dot format. I'm saying the format has to be hoodie. And then essentially I'm providing all the options and the path uh, where the data has to be saved on S3. Uh, then again, this line here over here, 103, essentially sh shows you how to read a data from uh, the hoodie table. Again, and the data is there on, you know, since we're gonna write that, write the data on, uh, on line 97, here I'm showing you how to read that data into hoodie. Uh, this one right here shows you how to append um, um, uh, items into the table. So we read the data, right? And again, we are essentially adding two items here. So here you will observe on line 118, we are using the word append on line 120. So this means that I wanna insert into that particular stuff. So observe, here is my data again. This is some incremental data that we are you know, uh, simulating here. So I made sure I made it into a Spark data frame on line 117. And then I'm essentially writing um, that uh, data frame and I'm using the mode as append here. So this will again add to that particular stuff. Uh, the last one is pretty easy. Again, we are creating a glue database. We're creating a glue table. And then essentially uh, what we did is uh, observe very carefully uh, on line number 124. I'm reading the data from the hoodie table, essentially S3, right, where I, uh, where I have all my data. And then essentially, um, if you observe, I, I do create replace temp view. I'm creating a view here uh, called hoodie user, user view, right? And then here on line 129, I say create table if not exist, hoodie demos, that is the database name. Table name is user, using um, parquet is the, uh, you know, file format that I'm using, location over here. This is the path where the data is, right? And then here I'm saying select everything from hoodie user tem uh, user view. This is coming from over here, okay? So again, I, I encourage you to like see the code. It's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, if you wanna dive into the syntax, I think um, they have a very, very nice uh, documentation. Uh, if you scroll down here, you can click on Python and they essentially have all the syntax. For example, here you can see how to create a table, how to insert data. Again, we are using all these same same thing, right? Um, uh, so, so all this is coming from here as you observe, right? This is how you'll insert. This is how you can query. You can click on Python. This will give you the Python code. Uh, so pretty self-explanatory at this point, right? Uh, at this point, what I will do is uh, just to show you that things works uh, perfectly. Um, I will basically come to my glue. Again, I am, uh, I'm gonna clean up the code a little bit. It's a little messy though. Uh, I have to do some cleanup there. Uh, I will delete all the database so that I can run the script and show you. Okay, so here you can see I'm gonna deploy uh, using serverless frameworks. I'm saying npx sls deploy. So this will deploy my stack. And I'm also gonna flush out everything in the S3 just to make sure that the project is clean. So now I'll go to the S3 bucket that is glue beginner that is over here. And uh, basically here you can see, um, you know, my stack has been deployed here, right? Uh, here you can see in the jar, there are these jar files. Uh, in the script, there, here is the script file, right? And if you go to glue, and if you head over to the job section, I should be seeing my job over here with the name hoodie glue uh, script template. Uh, for the configuration, I'm just gonna show you quickly, Glue 3.0, Python, right? I am role, number of workers, three. Uh, I have some additional configuration that I just showed you, right? Uh, here, I'm, I'm installing a library called Faker, you know, just to basically do some fake data. This is the base path of the S3, where I want the data to be stored. This is the table name called users, right? And here is the 
jar files path okay so we're gonna click on the save button right and that is saved and now i'm gonna click on run job uh, one quick note before you run this there will be a cost associated to the glue glue is not under the free tire so ideally you're looking at a dollar or with, within less than 50 cents okay so again my job is started yet uh, if you observe here it's in the running state i'm gonna refresh and this might take up again uh, depending upon the time five to ten minutes uh, how many workers you're using i'm simply using two workers for now um, as i said uh, so let's refresh let's wait and again all this code is available on the github section and also the original code which was given by the author author i'll leave the reference there as well I essentially took his code and I essentially uh, tweaked it and I made it into a serverless framework because I wanted to deploy stuff with serverless framework since I am more comfortable working with that, um, uh, as I said. So yeah, this uh, is still running uh, as you can see, uh, but once this is complete, uh, what we do expect is we do expect to see uh, some tables on S3. So I'm gonna go on the outer directory. So I'm gonna refresh to see the, yeah, here you can see there's a temp it's a user and here you can see you know uh, this is basically hoodie uh, you know essentially storing the data into uh, hoodie format right all i have to do is say format as hoodie let's see if the job is still running uh, the job is still running so we will wait um, um, we will wait here again the code is pretty self-explanatory I, I don't think it's difficult at all so if you observe you know here we are creating a spot data frame we are writing a spot data frame uh, again, we are reading the spot data frame from that um, hoodie table, right? We are essentially reading. Then we are appending certain items over here. Uh, it's self-explanatory. And then here we are creating some glue tables, right? Database and uh, tables. That's that's pretty much it. So here you can see the job is successful, okay? Uh, if I go to the glue, if I refresh here, I should see a database called default and uh, hoodie demo, which is absolutely great, uh, which is what I was expecting. If I go to tables, uh, I should be seeing a table here shortly. There you go, I see a table called user. Now I can, in theory, query this data. Uh, I can query my hoodie data uh, from Athena. So if I go to Athena, if I refresh, and if I come here and click on preview table, um, again, here you can see this is my data, which is coming uh, fr straight from S3 data lake, right? And um, if I show you the S3, uh, come here so here in the temp directory there's a folder called user and then here you can see there are all these parquet files uh, which uh, it essentially created for us right so again all this is done by hoodie again there are other settings that we can try and tweak but uh, i hope this gives you a very good starting point to get started with hoodie right uh, i'll leave all the source code in my github section uh, and also the references that i that i um advise you guys to read more um, again a little bit code cleanup is left I, I just started where you know i was working uh, from a couple of days trying to learn hoodie delta lake apache iceberg and all these other stuff but yeah the source code i'll leave it in the github i'll clean and again then push the cleanse version as well on that but if you have any questions let me know your question in the comments and do please try this out it's hoodie is something very very trending uh uh, when it comes to uh, you know data lake so I, I encourage you guys to essentially uh, write something into the data lake read something into the data read from the data lake then um, in uh, update something delete something all that you can try using uh, Apache PySpark right so thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed and if you have any more question you may list your question in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them thank you so much keep smiling keep programming see you guys in the next video